In this video, I'm making a Damascus chef knife with a mother of pearl handle. All right, that never gets old watching the forge heat up. I love the time lapse on that. And we're gonna squish this steel out. What we got here for steel is uh, my go-to 15N20 and 1084. And that'll give us a beautiful contrast on the Damascus. Clean up, build up a little bit. Gotta get the slag off of there. I'm getting ready to restack it so I can feather it. I'll stand this stack up, weld all the way around it, put her in the forge, get her warmed up uh, to around 2250, 2300 degrees, and split her down through the center and smear it. There's all kinds of ways to smear the split, different uh, shapes, different, uh, well, the temperatures need to be up, but different shapes of the splitting wedge will give you different tears and smears on the feather. Now I'm gonna slice me off a piece and see what she looks like on the inside. This vertical portable bandsaw has been a great addition to the shop. I'm glad we took time to set it up, build one. And there's the feather. Looks pretty good. I'll flatten it out a little bit. Upset the end because this is a Nikiri style knife. So I just square up the end a little bit just because I could. Got a really nice profile going on. It's an Asian style knife. I'm putting a convex on the knife right now. I took the blade edge on the rough grind down to about 20 thousandths, 18, 20, somewhere in there. Sometimes I go down to 15, especially on a knife like this, I might, I might go 15 thousandths thick. Then I'll do the convex, the edge, and I'll convex it till it uh, goes to nothing on, during the convex process, right before I do the performance test. This is just a, a preliminary etch to see where the blade's at. Make sure I got everything lined up really nice. I'm gonna put my maker's mark in there. I'm gonna keep moving forward. This particular knife had a lot of upgrades on it. The client wanted a, a kitchen and Nikiri knife that would uh, just totally bling. It's just a lot of show. It's a full-blown performance test. It's, it's gonna perform, but he wanted one that was uh, full-blown um, gonna look really really fun in the kitchen just a lot of uh, a lot of show on it uh, my client didn't want anything dark on the handle so all the materials I used were are bright and blingy and shiny. So I used my custom copper alloy for the front bolster, the liners, the pommel, and we did some file work on all that. Right here's the bolster I'm working on. I'm getting ready to fit it onto the tang up against the Ricasso. A lot of cutting and fitting and cutting and fitting. Sometimes these little guys can go on in an hour. Sometimes they'll take three or four hours to fit properly. But this custom copper alloy is pretty nice to work with. One challenge with using softer materials for the bolster, though, when you're setting them onto the tang is um, they can swell up 
and give you a, a false indication of where they're sitting. So you, you've got to actually tap the brakes just a little bit when you're setting softer uh, bolster material onto the tang up against the Ricasso. And I got it fit, the bolster fit really good. So now I'm uh, threading the tang because this is a takedown frame style handle on a kitchen knife. I would like to give some honor and thanks to our members who support what we do here in the shop. So thank you, Jeffrey Copens, Jeffrey Lawfer, James Thomas, Justin Burton, Nathaniel Mitchell, Zachary Osborne, William Steele, Brad Morgan, Brandon Bennett, Adam Davis, John Merlino, John Myrick, and over 400 other members for your loyal support. This is the pommel and I throw it on the mill just to get it flat on one side where it fits up against the handle and it does. And I've got a beautiful piece of mother of pearl. Uh, it's not exhibition grade, but it's a, a very nice grade uh, mother of pearl. I'm getting everything roughed in. I've got a white G10 liner on the backside of the pearl because that pearl's pretty exposed. It's slightly fragile, so this G10 is really gonna stiffen it up. And also the white G10 looks great uh, on the backside of that pearl. I'm doing a layout for some of my file work now. I think there's about 36 parts in this knife. 32, 36 parts between pins and screws. It's just a lot of pieces. Uh, but that's what you get on a takedown knife. Especially with liners and a frame handle. It was a great build. some file work here and then I went in which is something I never do I wanted to make it look a little organic so I freehand the uh, engraving uh, which I never I never do that I've never done that before but I thought this would give it a nice earthy and they're real delicate Yeah, you can't see them real well but you, there's just a wisp of them on the uh, liners. This is a, a tool that I fabricated in the shop. I call it the Franken sander. It's a Makita reciprocating saw underneath mounted to a, a metal frame and a two by four with drawer glides, ball bearing drawer glides on each side. It works pretty good. It's kind of scary to use though. I don't know if I'm gonna stick with it or not. There's the finished etch on the knife with the ferric chloride. Came out beautiful. I'm gonna complete the coffee darkening. Let it soak in the coffee and I'll go do some other things. 
I'm going to get rid of a little weight on the frame. I'm going to skeletonize the frame just a little bit. Usually on a takedown knife, the, the blade's like a, on a large buoy or a fighter. And you got a lot more weight out front. But I didn't have hardly any weight out there because it was like a seven and a half inch Nikiri with a two, two inch heel. So, and it's pretty thin. And uh, so I had to get rid of a little bit of weight just to make the balance a little sweeter for the client. I had to flatten that uh, frame a little bit. It just got a little wonky on me. So I flattened it uh, with some heat and shimmed it and put some pressure on it and it came out really well. It took a little fussing, but uh, I, got, I got flattened out. I'm cannibalizing the liners to get rid of a little bit of weight in my custom copper alloy. These frame pieces are wrought iron. So I etched them uh, kind of heavy. Everything was so refined and smooth on the knife. I thought the contrast uh, with the wrought iron would be a beautiful addition to this knife. Uh, the grain is exposed on the wrought iron. Uh, we have polished uh, custom copper alloy. We got polished pearl and uh, the blades really refined. And I gold plated the pole nut and gold plated the screws that hold the handle assembly together. I spent a lot of time putting this gold on, so it's very, very thick, a lot of microns. I, I, I was like three minutes is a lot. I went on it for like probably 10 minutes, so it should hold up really well in the kitchen. Lots of assembly, lots of taking, taking apart and putting back together over and over that's why i love the alignment pins and everything it always goes back the same every time this knife shows really well uh, the client was just just crazy about it that was it was more than more than uh, he had imagined it could be that's always fun to hear from the client the bolsters are wrought iron too on the, the front and back bolsters on the sides plus the frame so it gives a little bit of contrast to all that refined smooth uh, surface on the knife handle looks beautiful with the uh, 14 karat or excuse me 24 karat gold uh, uh, plating on the screws very very heavy gold plating on the screws and the pommel nut that really pops against that polished pearl great build great client and uh, definitely will uh, do a knife like that again i'll see you in the next video may the forge be with you bye bye